Psalm chapter 133, a song of degrees of David. Behold, how good and how present is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. We'll come back to that. You know I can't leave that one alone. It is All right, so what is the unit? It's like the precious ointment upon the head. That would be the olive oil that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirt. Men shall not wear what pertains to a woman. A woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. All right, that's a good verse. Aaron's a male, and he's wearing the skirt. Black and white. I guarantee there's some alibi there of his garment. As the dew of Hermon. Dew is from God. It's fresh and it's pure. And these are fruitful mountains. The dew of Hermon as the dew that descended upon mountains of Zion. Zion is God's resting place to be. And as David's writing right now, it's that dew is needed. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, happiness, joy, ever life, forevermore. Now Zion comes where God dwells for the Jew, where Jesus Christ is going to dwell in the future. But let's get back to for the brethren to dwell in and together in unity. Unity is one. And it's described as being pure, verse 3, to do. It's to be natural, it's to be God. I don't think man could man can make man may do. If he can, oh well, that's that's not what David's talking about. And the precious ointment, the olive oil that was beaten. To represent the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being beaten, Isaiah 53. And the whips upon his back as the furrows of a field of a farmer. So that unity is to be in pure holiness, anointed of God. Because Aaron was of God. An office that was of God. As pure as the dew. The unity of the brethren is to be that is right and not what is carnal and worldly. We are not to be together as Christians in fellowship when it is in Belial. Because Paul tells us we are to be in Christ or we are to be Belial. We are not to be in unity when it comes to <coughs> living in holiness and righteousness. And in carnality, where Paul rebuked the Corinthian church for being carnal and babes in Christ. And I'm going to set forth, because if you see the, the title that I put for this, and I'm going to set forth my belief and my conviction. I don't believe VBS and programs are... To be in unity in the church, I believe they're they're carnal. You may have the VBS is correct, but let me tell you, I've been in a VBS in Uncasville or Montville. I've been in a VBS of Broughton, Connecticut. I've been in a VBS of Deland, Florida. I've been in a VBS of um, uh, Ormond Beach, Florida. I'm trying to think. There's one or two more. I can't think. And there's one church I'm not going to mention that we were in the VBS from from prep to the end. We were kicked out of a church because we did not like the decorations. They had decorated the whole entire church. I'm not going to tell you which. 
The entire church was decorated. Oh, what's de my conviction? My conviction. Excuse me for not, and I mean, excuse me that if I don't partake of the, the decorations, I don't think they're holy. You believe it is? That's your conviction? Perfectly fine. We're not going to do a battleground here. We're to dwell in unity. I don't get involved in that. I don't get involved in carnality and worldliness. PBS, you got 10 minutes of Bible, 15 minutes of crap, 15 minutes of lunch, 15 minutes of playing outside, 15 minutes of some kind of, you know, get up and teach the children something without the Bible. Uh, remember, I've been in five BBSs. They've all been the same. There's no Bible time compared to play time, lunch time, craft time, playground time. When you put that up against that and what the Bible time is, there's more other times than there is Bible. You want to ask me? You put up a tent, you get you get old Methodist kind of a hellfire preaching where you smell the brimstone. That's what that's what I want to see. That's where I'll go. I'll support that. One of those VBSs, they gave away Bible. You know, me and one of my wives, I'm not going to mention which one, checked the Bibles out and found out they're not King James Bible. So Stiley went up to the person who was in charge of the VBS and brought it to their attention. Well, they were free, and we were given to by the group. I'm not going to mention the group's name, which is not King James Bible. New King James, NIV, and maybe a couple other perverted Bibles were given away to children. Well, it's not going to be my church. This is the EBS I've been in, and they had the they had them, they had the Bibles at the end of the program in one big pile. I told the guy, you know what I can do with that pile? He said, what? I'll give me some gasoline. They didn't like it. By the way, the said church, we left that church eventually because the pastor was King James changing the word of God. And what was the last straw was with the VBS. And then the last straw was when we're reading through John chapter 14, uh, it wasn't a mansion. And that was it. We were done. That was too much of the perversion of the Bible. We went to another VBS, and at the very last day of the VBS, all the kiddies got up and they sang their VBS songs. Nothing to do with the Bible. Never is. I know you may have the VBS. All right, you may have it. Go ahead and have it. Don't invite me. I'm not going to get involved. I'm going to go on the street and preach. But... At the, end of, at the end of this VBS, I'm not going to mention the church, the children had gone out and collected pennies. Mama, grandma, whoever, whoever they could get pennies. And I, I, I forget completely, but, but this is the thing, and one of my wives was, part, was with me and my family. We were quite shocked at the, the last song as they're gathering all the pennies up to find out how much pennies they got. We have nothing left of all our work. We have nothing left of all our work. And bring in all the pennies. My wife turned to me, who was a Bible reader, Bible study, said, they don't have nothing left for doing all the work of the Lord? Stiley, isn't there supposed to be gold, silver, and precious stones? Honey Pie, I'm not going to say her name, Honey Pie, I didn't call her that either, I make, I just made up a name, I said they're not going to get gold, silver, gold, silver, and precious stone with this mess, they're going to get nothing as they're singing, Lord, hey, or stubble. Now you may have the VBS, I'm, I don't want to get involved, I don't want to get involved with programs, I don't want to get involved in games. I don't think a Christian 
should have competition with another Christian, I think we're supposed to help each other out. I don't think there'd be red teams and blue teams. I was in a, I was in another VBS church, not mentioning no name, and all the kids were climbing over the pews of the church as one of their athletic events. I was at another youth group conference at a church. I'm not going to, oh yeah, youth group conference. I can mention the churches now. But we were at a church where the youth group conference and the youth group director had the children drinking out of the solo cups that were red and pretending they were drunk. I've got one of my wives and my children as a witness. You're not going to pass that off on me. And said church got upset and one of the excuses why they the church to, because I didn't allow my children to be part of that youth group when in youth group, they're sitting there with, with foam hands. Number one, we're going to be up in heaven with foam hands. With, with sticking up number one like they do for the football and baseball team. Hey, number one. Yeah, you're full of bunk. Now, I'm going to tell you. I was born in 1968, September. I was born again, April 1987. This is 2020. I have got a lot of convictions that preachers get up and preach about convictions. If it's biblical and it's right, stand to, to, those, to those convictions. And I've had preachers get mad at me because of my convictions. I've gone and said, hey, you know what you're doing? That's not biblical. I cannot stand in unity with all that mess. Now, unity. What, what can Stiley do in church? You got old time hymns. You got the old time favorites of the hymns. I'll sing those hymns with you. I'll glory and worship God with you. The old time hymns. And I, I there was a family. There, there, uh, uh, snow bunnies here in Florida. If you don't know what snow bunny. They go up north. They come back down south. And they brought in some great old hymns that they worked with us, and we never heard them before, and they were great. I'll be in unity with you with the old time hymn. I'll be in unity with you, the old fashioned preaching of the cross. Of the gospel that Jesus Christ, the blessed hope, suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I will I will be in unity with you with the Bible doctrines of the virgin birth. Live right, separation. Israel's God's people. The second coming of Jesus Christ, the rapture, Jacob's trouble, the millennium, New Jerusalem, what heaven's about, the writings of Paul, the division of the Old Testament and the New Testament, all the entire life of Jesus, the life of the, the entire Bible is for, I'll get in unity with you with that. Glory to God. Now there's some things we can't get in unity. I happen to believe in a gap theory. Other other people don't. Hey, that's not a church doctrine. You believe the gap theory or don't believe in the gap theory? No, okay. One of us is wrong. One of us is going to get wood, hair, stubble. No problem. I believe that the angels in, in, in Genesis... Well, the sons of the sons of uh, uh, God in Genesis that came down and mated with the, with the women of, of uh, it's over there in Genesis. I can't think. I believe they're angels. Some people believe they're other people. Okay. I've heard both that I heard both sides of the story. I will stick to angels. That's nothing to fight about. That's nothing to break our unity. But when you get up as a King James Bible believing church and you're changing the word of God, as one of the preachers in the old church I was in, you know, verily, verily, truly, truly. No, verily, verily. 
Whenever it said verily, very he was truly, truly. And like I said, it didn't he didn't say mansion. Now there's a difference when you get up there and, and he reads the King James. This is the meaning, this is the Hebrew, this is the Greek, this is the 1828. That, that's different. That's somebody, hey. Uh like it like chapter 133, verse 1. Behold. Well, behold, that's a standout word. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, he didn't change it. I've been in King James churches where they change the word of God while you're reading it. And it doesn't. That's another thing we can't I can't be in unity. I've got people who stand up strong for the for the modern Bibles. Not me. It's King James or it's nothing. I got one man right now. He's in a modern Bible. He's also in a King James Bible. And I've seen the Lord work in his life and he's going King James slowly. I am set upon King James 1611 Bible. If your church is not King James, if your church changes from the King James, I won't be there. I can't have unity with a modern Bible. Absolutely not. Unity is one. Listen, if it's a Bible strong doctrine, the virgin birth, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. We don't live by the law. The law can't save you. We're to have works after our salvation. We're to be the new creature. We're to tithe. I believe in tithing. Yes, tithing is before before the law. It's during the law and this church age law. That's unity. I support the church. Let me just say above tithing. I support missionary. I've been in churches where there's been no missionary support. That's wrong. That's in the Bible. There's been, I, I was in a church one time, and after the church service, they would have hot dogs, hamburgers, fellowships, and all that other nonsense. To me, it's nonsense. All the time. A wife and I would not take part. I'm talking about, listen, I'm not talking about every once in a while, you got a, you got a church uh, anniversary, you got, you know, uh, something special coming up. Okay, I will take part in that, but I'm talking about the church I'm talking about. And it, it was a drop of a hat. And then what, what made it worse was there would be no Sunday service that evening because of the fellowship. And I, I, I swear to you that there came a time that the pastor came to me and my fiance, and because, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, wait a minute. He told us he wasn't going to marry us. Well, what crime did we commit? Were we living together? No. Have we gone out gambling? I mean, no, there were no casinos yet, so. Have we gone out gambling? No. Have we got involved with illegal drug use? No. Have we not gone to church and not been participating in church? No. What was the great crime that this pastor of this church came to me and my fiance and said, I would not marry you, that we had to do what the saying that we what forbidden us? We weren't going to the fellowship. And they would, well, we're not playing bingo, we're playing Jesus. I can't have unity with that. We had, well, you already know now who I'm talking about, my wife. We were married on November 2nd. We did not go back to the church that was married us. Why? Because... Our pastor left the reception early. 
because the church was not having a Halloween party November 2nd. They were just having a costume party on November 2nd. But it had nothing to do with December 31st, Halloween. I can't have unity with that. I cannot have unity with sin. Maybe I'm going to get myself in trouble, but we do what is Bible. We do what is right. Uh, you go knocking on doors. Glory to God. I'll pray for you. I wish I could, but my feet will not allow me. I preach on the streets. Those are, that's something we can join in unity with prayer. We can get together on that. We're soul winning. Whether you pass out gospel tracts, knocking on doors, you pass out gospel tracts on the street, you, you pass it out gospel tracts to, to catch ears, or you pass it out, whatever, however you do it. If, if we're together in the unity of getting the gospel out, glory to God, amen. Let me know how you're doing it. Let me know when you do it so I can pray for you. But we cannot stand together in, in, in unity on witnessing if you go out there, well, just say this prayer and you'll be saved. I can't get involved in easy believism. I've dealt with people who are easy believism and you can't deal with them anymore. They're saved. They said a prayer. I had one man one time in prison tell me, the preacher prayed for me. I'm saved. I tried so hard to work with that guy. I said, and I took it Romans 10, with the heart, your heart, not the pre not the preacher's heart. The preacher, I'm settled, sir. And he said, sir, respectfully. I can't be in unity in a song program where you're going to play Christian contemporary music. I can't be in unity if you got Christian rock. I can't be in unity. I don't. And look, I had some family on stage. We had a, a, there was a time in Connecticut, there, there was a, a Roman Catholic Christian, um, a Roman Catholic family member who had died. I, I respectfully told him, I'm not going in that church. I'll meet you at the graveyard. Because I know what they do at the, at the funeral. They go up and receive the mass. I am not. Don't ask me. I will not have anything to do with that mess. I can't have unity in that. I'll meet you at the, I'll meet you at the graveyard. I came out of that mess. If I go into a Catholic church, somebody's going to see me. Somebody's going to say, "Well, he was a Catholic," and they're going to say he approves of it. And the Bible say, "Abstain from all appearance of evil." When it's in the Bible, it's a Bible fact, I could be in unity. If it's worldly, it's a carnal, please respect my convictions and just, all right, he doesn't want to do it. But you know, listen, you know what? He preaches, he teaches, he gets the gospel out, he loves the Lord, he loves the Bible. He Understand where I come from. I believe I'm going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I don't want wood, hair wood, stubble. Now, am I saying you're going to get wood, hair stubble? Well, that's my conviction. If that's not your conviction, do to your will. I'm not. I'm not going to go Second John and say, "Well, good day, God bless." I won't. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. I can't rightfully be involved in the Laodicean church aid gimmicks. I think so. Just if you invite me to come to your church, <clears throat> VBS, you know, hey, come see my. What, don't be surprised if I say no. And I've been invited. At our church, we're going to have, you know, 
we're having this music thing. Are there drums and electric guitars? Oh, yeah, we got this great. Sorry, I can't go. Oh, you can't? No, can't go. Uh, I had one guy invite me to a Holy Ghost fire Pentecostal thing. Sorry. Don't believe him. Oh, come on. Can't, don't believe him. I had one person one time invite me to a, a, a healing service. And one of my, my Christians, hey, you should go to see it. No, I ain't going. Because if I show up there, abstain from all appearance of evil, somebody sees me there, they're going to think I approve. I don't. So, I have convictions, and I'm going to die with my convictions. They have been my convictions for two wives, and even before two wives. Uh, here's what I dwell in unity. I don't believe in holidays. I've had both my wives. I've taught them. I show them the scripture. I show them the history. Both okay. Christmas is wrong. Easter is wrong. What's the Bible say? What are the facts? Okay, we're not doing it. Praise the Lord. I went to a I went to a pastor's house, and we went. We were invited for dinner for Christmas, or around Christmas. Went and he goes, you know, we have a Christmas tree. I don't care. It ain't gonna bite me. It looks pretty. I really like your bell bush. That did not go off too well, but I mean, I'm not gonna scold you out at your house about your bell bush. Don't be surprised. I don't call it a Christmas tree. I will call it a bell bush. Okay, That's, you believe it's good. I have got videos and I've got things where you can download now and, and more if I can find them where it's not Bible. My conviction is don't have it. My conviction I don't have anything to do with birthday. Now if you want to celebrate the new birth glory to God I'll sing happy birthday to the new birth. I will sing to that. But I will not sing happy birthday to someone who's been born in sin and born to die in their sin, and without Jesus Christ, they're going to go to hell and burn forever. I won't do that. I'm sorry. Now, I'll be nice. I will mouth with my mouth the happy birthday, but I ain't singing. I don't believe it's right. Uh, two birthdays in the Bible, both men lost their life. Jeremiah, Job, both of them cursed the day they were born. I've got Bible scripture to go against your birthday. You want to have birthday? Go for it. Oh, you're so cruel. What about your family? If you would live with my with my wife as their their husband, you would live. The fact is, with me being a father to my children, you were always throughout the year. You were always blessed with presents and surprises. You did not need a birthday or Christmas to get a surprise. I astonished my wife, Lisa, because I worked third shift for the newspaper, driving around delivering newspapers. I would go to and visit. I had to drop off newspapers at the convenience store. If you never, ever paid attention at a convenience store, you don't realize they come up with a lot of new, interesting things. Lisa would never know when I come home from work what I had bought for her. She even had a, little, had a little shelf of stuff I, she would put up there. She never know I, I would come home with just a dozen donuts. We go in the store, my, my wife Tracy. We go into Walmart. I don't know if I can say Walmart. All right? It's not a birthday. It's not Christmas. I see a shirt there. I say, you know what? That, that, that shirt typifies something my wife likes. Tracy, see if you can find a shirt with your side. Or I would shop and, you know, if she wasn't with me, I, 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 you never know. I don't need Christmas and birthdays and all that. But a wedding anniversary, yep, I do, wed I do anniversaries. Anniversaries are in the Bible with the Passover, with the <clears throat> Feast of the Tabernacle, 
Day of Atonement. Those are anniversaries. The one with the, this one really. Leave to my conviction. I'll leave it to yours. Sally, who are you going to vote for in the election? I don't vote. Ah! You've got the right to vote! So I don't. Ah! What's the problem? You just said I had the right to vote, so if I choose not to vote, it's my right. So I will turn around and say, when was the last time you gave a gospel tract out to somebody? Well, it's I don't believe in voting. I believe the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. I pray for the president. I pray for Democrats. I pray for Republicans. And please, I'm not going to offend you. I pray for Republicans. I pray for Democrats. They're in my prayer list. Every time we get a new president, when he's inaugurated in, in January, I forget which, like the third Friday in January, after he takes the oath in office, I write a letter to that new president, and I send him a gospel tract. Now, I've gotten letters from, I've been doing that ever since Ronald Reagan. I've got a letter from Ronald Reagan, both the Bushes. I think I got something from the Clintons, but it wasn't from the, it was the office of the Clintons. But, you know, I've never got a letter back, and I've sent two or three to Obama and Trump. Never I got a letter from them. And if we get a new president oh, in January, oh, what Bush, you don't want Trump. I didn't say that. If we get a new president in January, when he's inaugurated, he takes the oath in office, I'm going to type up a letter, and I'm going to send him a gospel tract. What if it's Bush? I'll send him another one. President Obama got two. Uh, one of the Bushes got two. Uh, Bill Clinton got two. I pray for them. I've got Janet Polizzi, or whatever how you say her name. I've got um, Bernie, whatever. I got their names in my. Uh, I got their names in my. What you hate, I put in my in my prayer book. The Democrat, I pray for them. The Bible says pray for the leaders. The Bible says you're to uphold and listen to the to the leaders. The Bible says you're not supposed to rank on the leader. And I hear this, I vote, I'm a Christian. I hate that guy. I really, I wish that guy just... I don't. So don't be surprised when you come up and say, who are you voting for? I say nobody. We can deal in unity. You vote. Go for it. I don't vote. I get yelled at. And then, you know, I will, like I said, I will usually sometimes say, well, you know, <clears throat> you know, you ought to vote. I vote. And then uh, usually my remark is something. The fact is, when was the last time you passed out a gospel tract? When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? And most of the time, it's been quite a bit of a while. Most of the time. But we can dwell in unity whether you're a voter or not voter. We can dwell in unity whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. There are some Christians out there I have dealt with. If you are a Democrat, you're, you're scum. You're scum. Doing in unity is the, the serious foundation of Jesus Christ in the Bible and the King James Bible. Now, I'm just trying to see what are the other things. All right, there's one today I read in the book of Acts. Paul meets Jesus on the road to Damascus. And Ananias comes up to say, Brother Paul, some take that 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 he that Paul is saved already, and then he's baptized. I'm with that crowd. 
Some say there was something else that when Paul was saved, okay. But we can deal with one thing about Paul's salvation. What's that? He was saved before he was baptized. That's unity. That's a Bible doctrine. You're saved. You, you, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then baptism. Now, if you say baptism is salvation, Acts 2.38, and baptism will wash away your sins, then we stand opposed. Then we stand opposed. There are people who believe the church is going to go through the tribulation period. I cannot stand in unity. I believe the Bible says the Christian is going to be raptured. Then sometime after that, the tribulation period starts when I don't know. And what I mean I don't know is a second, a minute, an hour, a day, a week, a month. A year after the rapture. I don't know. The Revelation chapter 5. When the Lamb Jesus Christ. Opens up that first seal. That's the tribulation start. The church is gone. Chapter 4. Now that is a unity and, and faith. That we must believe. The church was raptured before. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you say, that's something we have to be in unity about. So when you, you're dealing with me, and listen, I respectfully, I don't go antagonizing you. And if your house has a Christmas tree, I will come over and I'll look at it and I'll say something about Bale Bush. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what bothered me that one night that we, that we were at the pastor's house. That when we got in the house, when I started the car, I had to I had to repent of the Lord for something that happened in that house of my sin. Oh, there he goes, repented. I didn't repent the Christmas tree. That night, the pastor of that church and my family, somehow we got playing liars poker. And I had to, in my car, bow my head. I had to apologize to the Lord and repent of that sin. I don't know how we got into doing that. You want to play cards? Don't involve me. You want to play lottery? Now here's something I do. Somebody go by. I'll tell you. If you want to get me involved, I'll tell you what I say. Why don't you just give me the money? I'll put it to better use. I won't buy a lottery ticket, but I'll put it in my wallet. I don't believe a Christian should gamble. And if you're a Christian, you gamble. I can't stand with you on that. Uh, here's another thing. All right. I am not really for it. I don't like this. I don't like it. But feeding the, the homeless. I don't like it. I've been in a church where it was. And said church was, I have witnessed and my family has witnessed that somebody has been baptized and publicly told the pastor, well, this is the fourth time you're baptizing me. And they were baptized again. And we took part as a family. We helped set up the chicken. We helped set up everything. You say, well, Brother Sally, we do that and we preach the gospel. Amen. Glory to God. The church that I was in didn't preach the gospel. We preach from Finley. I think it was Finley. I could be wrong. The preacher would print out Finley or whoever it was, and we would just read a, a readout from the guy's book. If you're going to be, if you want me to be involved feeding the homeless people, if, to me, you better have the gospel. And not a watered down gospel. Um, I don't do movie nights. I don't think it's right. 
What's the difference between Hollywood and a Christian movie? Most of it, you, I have two Christian movies I ever watched in my home, privately. Maybe, well, I don't have a wife now. But Hollywood, actor Tom says in the movie, his name is Stanley. That's a lie. The Christian movie, Fred says his name is Eric. He's no better than Tom. They're both lying. I'm lying for Jesus Christ. Now, see, there's my conviction. All lies are sins. I can't stand in unity with, with Easter and the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus. So that's just some of the things. What if it's Bible doctrine? Hey, amen, glory to God, let's do it. So, you know, if I invite you to this conference and, and you know, this preaching thing, you're not going because you don't. No, that case, really, I'll tell you what's wrong with me on that one. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't like to go anywhere. And a lot of times, too, you think about, well, he's not coming because he's super Christian. No, I'm not coming because I don't want to go. Tracy got upset with me about that many times. I'm 52 years old. And you know what? I really just want to stay home. I don't want to go out. And I'm not saying I don't. Married as, you know, as a husband. We, we go watch the sunrise. We go to walk in the park. We go to the, the museum. You know, stuff like that. I mean, but, you know, if you come to this conference. No, I really don't want to. You, you don't, you don't approve. No, I don't approve. I just don't want to go. I don't want to spend all that time. I know, I, listen, I know I should be there. And I know I should be growing for the Lord, but I don't want to go. Respect that. And maybe sometime I will go, but. It's just the life that I lived. You know what? I'm finally settled. I got a home. I got a place. I served the Lord. And respectfully, I am not saying that that preacher, that church is wrong. I'm just saying with that, I don't really want to go. Maybe I, maybe I should go. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. But for that, I'm not saying they're wrong. It, it might be great. might be a wonderful, great thing. I just don't want to go. <laughs> well, I got convictions and I got, I don't want to go. It's plain and simple. Everything else. Listen, as a family, my entire life, we sat around every night and we read and study the Bible. We do that with unity. I go to my church. I am in unity with, the, with, with my church, with the Bible, the singing, and the praise. They want to do something. They do something. I want to do something. I do something. I'm not there to cause a bother. Whether it's my conviction or I don't want to do it, I don't want to go. We have Bible study on, on, on Friday. That's unity together as we open up the Bible and study the Word of God. That's something God has called me. What God's called me, what God wants me to do, I'm going to do. We go Saturday mornings, we go to the flea market, and I preach the Word of God. That's something, if God's called me to do it, I'm going to do it. If I got the option and God's not working on my heart to do it, I mean, if the Lord told me, hey, I want you to go hear that preacher. I want you to go listen to that. If the Lord laid on my heart, and I've asked the Lord sometimes, and 
have not been convicted. The Lord, if the Lord was saying, there's been times where, where you better go. And there are times, you know, I don't feel the Holy Spirit. I don't feel God saying, you know, go, you, you must go. And I, I don't go. But my convictions have got me very much trouble. But I can dwell in unity. I teach Sunday, well, there are times I teach Sunday school at my church. I am not ever going to get in my pastor's pulpit or podium. It's, it's not his, it's not his pulpit. We have a podium. I am not ever going to get in that church and preach anything that's against my pastor's teaching. I know some of the things my pastor is for and I'm not for, and the things I'm for and he's not for. I am not ever going to dare in his podium, in his church, in his building, I am not ever going to cross my pastor ever. I would be in the wrong. And if I ever did, accidentally, I, I did not know he was against that. I did not know he was. I don't do that. I respect my pastor in very much way, and I respect his pulpit. I respect his teaching. There are other things we do, we do in unity. And there have been times our passing it. We both talked, and he's believed something, and he I don't believe it, and he'll make a you know. Well, I don't find anywhere to okay. Next, next subject. I don't fight, and I probably said things to the to the pastor about things I believe, and there's been a couple statements he's made. Okay, I won't say it. I won't bring that up. I won't. I respect that. And I'm not going in full fire and, you know, all guns loaded. I don't do that. What happens is I step on somebody's toe and they ouch. And a lot of times people in the church know my family's faithful. And what happens is, why ain't the Haywards here? Now the pastor's got to go online because, you know, I don't mean online to computer. He's got to go. Yeah, those Haywards, they're the Bible. And now I got to explain to them why they're not here because, of, yeah. Now that becomes the problem. That's what's happened over the years. But we can dwell in unity. We're to dwell in unity. Just don't expect me to be part any carnality, worldliness, or anything like that. Don't expect me to open up a modern Bible or bring it more. Bible study today. You had a gentleman. He he didn't like how I how I do the Bible study. He wanted me to do the Bible study his way. Sorry. You get saved, and then you do your own Bible study the way you want to do it. I'm sorry, but I'm the one in charge. And pretty much, he wanted to do. Well, we read a passage, and everybody says what they feel about that. I don't believe in that. I believe in one person, one Bible, and one teaching, and I don't care what your opinion is. Your opinion that don't count is what the Bible says. It's why I have the doctorate in theology. It's why I am called Dr. Stiley William Hayward for the doctrine I've got in the teaching of the Bible. You're not even saved. And you're going to tell us what the Bible says? We can't dwell in unity. Now, we've had in our Bible study, we had somebody come up and ask a question. We've come up and somebody's added something. We can do that. But we're not going to sit around and give our opinion. That was asked today at the Bible study. I can't deal in unity with that. So... 
just wanted to give a little who I am, what I am, what I stand. And listen, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I really am. I hope you come to the truth. I know that that was just a slam. That was Goliath falling down and hitting the ground. Because my convictions are what my convictions are is if I go against what I, my, I am convicted of, I'm going to stand before Jesus Christ and I'm going to get wood, hay, or stubble if I cross my conviction. Now, you may not have those convictions. I do. And I'm not going to go in and teach them. Now, I will teach some things at my Bible study on Fridays and my family Bible study, and you will hear some teaching on these videos that don't agree with you and don't agree with the church, don't agree with your pastor, don't agree with... Because this is my Bible study. This is what God's giving me. And this is how, what I teach from the Bible. And there are times that people will hear, and I don't believe in that. Fine. If I am biblically wrong, Show me scripture. And I have failed to have one person come up and show me scripture. With my conviction. The church that had the, the decoration. There was no scripture. If you don't like the decorations, then don't come back. Okay. We were going to come back next week. We weren't going to make no fucks. We didn't make no fucks. Another church say, well, we have decoration. We do that. Fine. That's okay. No problem. Why was it a problem with the other church? The entire church was decorated. That was stupid. And all for the, the, the theme of the VBS, which, again, I can't dwell in unity with VBS, just plain and simple. Don't ask. But when it comes to sound Bible doctrine and then some other things in there, we can dwell in unity. You don't believe in the gap theory, and I do. Well, we can get a go. We can get along. We don't need to have a big argument, a big debate. And if you invite me to your church, or if I come to your church and I speak, I am not going to go to gap. I'll find something else. And if you invite me over your house and you got a Christmas tree, well, I may say bail bush. And I'm not going to say that street preaching is the only way of, of, I've had people do that. Their method, I had a pastor one time, it was his way or the highway, and he came out, I'm not going to tell you what you're, that pastor came out and would say out of the pulpit, it's his way or the highway, you don't like it, go to the treasurer and tell the treasurer you want your money back, you're leaving the church. That was a pastor of one church. Well, you sure ain't going to talk to that man. I don't know. Well, that's it. I can go on and on. I'm not going to. There are things I believe. There are things you believe. I'm sticking firm on what I believe and what I've taught my family because I feel I don't want wood, hay, or stubble. Well, that you believe what I believe is wrong. If I give you Bible and I show you from the Bible and I can show you Christmas, Easter, birthdays, I can show you from the Bible where they're wrong. I can show you your modern Bible where you're wrong. Now that's where the line's drawn.
Maybe I didn't make any friends, but I'm not in the ministry to make friends. And with the ministry I have, I make very few friends. And with the ministry I have, I get friends and I lose them real quick. And I don't do it purposely. I just preach the truth. I preach the word of God. And Jesus ended up at the cross with only one disciple. 